Hey there, it's Gary Parrish. Welcome back to the CBS Sports I Own College Basketball Podcast, where we sometimes discuss camel fighting dodo birds and leaky black. The I Own College Basketball Podcast presented by Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's a sub above. Kyle Boone is here with me. On the same day, Scott Drew has announced that he's staying at Baylor, which of course means he's not going to be the next head coach at the University of Kentucky. Dan Hurley also has more or less informed Kentucky he is not going to be the next head coach of the Wildcats. So let's stop here, Strong Jaw. I don't think either one of us are surprised that the next head coach of Kentucky is not going to be Dan Hurley. Why would you leave UConn after back-to-back national championship? So let's focus on Scott Drew. Kentucky clearly pursued him. He wanted the job. By all accounts, it was his. But the future Naismith Memorial Hall of Famer released a statement earlier today uh, pledging his allegiance to Baylor for reasons tied to both his faith and his family. First question, are you surprised that Scott Drew has turned down both Louisville and Kentucky over the past month? Because, uh, you know, that's not something that somebody does every year. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to join you, GP. I apologize if I am not as prepared as normal. Uh, my fi- family and I actually just got off a private plane from Lexington. Oh, um, and I actually, I didn't want to share this, but we have decided uh, to remain here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We will not be going to the University of Kentucky. So I join my brother, Scott Drew, in remaining home. This is where I'm comfortable. Well, that's a big relief to us at CBS Sports, obviously to the Eye on College of Basketball podcast. I feel... Um, You know, some empathy for UK having missed on another uh, target, particularly a strong one like strong jaw. But, um, you know, I'm happy you're going to stay where you're at. Uh, So it's basically at this point, Dan Hurley has passed. Scott Drew has passed. Cal Boone has officially also passed. Are you surprised Scott Drew is going to remain in Waco? Yeah, I I think I am just a little bit. Um, You know, I I think this is a guy who definitely does not want to live in Kentucky. He's made that perfectly clear. Um, Norlander earlier today reporting that he's turned down Kentucky and an NIL plan that, according to Norlander, uh, was poised to approach around $6 million in the next 12 months. That is a lot, a lot of money that can buy you a lot of players. Um, and earlier, th- earlier this year, obviously, he turned down the Louisville job. Uh, which is a very good job. Th- both of those jobs, I think, are top 10 in college basketball. But he's clearly happy in Waco. He's happy with what he's built at Baylor. And he's been there two years or t- two decades, excuse me. So he's obviously comfortable where he's at. He's comfortable in his own skin. Um, we've seen time and again, people leave situations where they're happy and to decide to go chase money. And sometimes it doesn't always work out. Um, and so, you know, for Scott Drew, I think that his his decision makes sense for him he it's reflective in where he's at right now in his career which is he's happy in in waco his family's happy in waco and scott drew loves the mexican food in in waco Mikasita is uh apparently very very good so i don't blame him i love i love some good mexican food just like everyone else and yeah he's staying put this is gonna be an interesting twist in this kentucky search now Obviously, the Mexican food scene in Waco went viral earlier this week uh, when Scott Drew released uh, a picture, tweeted a picture of himself and a Baylor donor, uh, presumably to combat the reports that he was actually in Lexington. I don't know if I've ever been to that Mexican spot in Waco uh, with Scott Drew, but I have been to a Mexican spot in Waco uh, with Scott Drew and I believe Jerome Tang many, many uh, years ago. and. Um, um, I, I, I remember it fondly. I remember having a great meal there. So if, if that's among the reasons you don't want to leave Waco, it, it makes sense to me. I guess um, once it had gotten so far down the line, like is in negotiations and, you know, family is looking into it and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. I did start to wonder, okay, that, you know, that's the type of thing, like when you start looking at new houses, I don't know if you've ever been house shopping recently, oh, but yeah. when you start when you start looking at new houses, like you can get real enamored with, everything you're looking at because you only see the good stuff and um it you know it can make going back to the old place like god you know you're just sort of mentally out the door but he tweeted that you know after consideration and i'm paraphrasing here but um well i'll just quote him directly he said in our program this is a a tweet from scott drew earlier today in our program we strive to put jesus first then others then ourselves we truly believe god has called my family and I to continue our work here at Baylor, surrounded by the best people and community anyone could be blessed to have. I, I, um, I'm very respectful 
of all religions. I am not particularly religious myself. So sometimes when I hear folks invoke God and, you know, uh, you know, into sports, like God was with this. That's why I scored this touchdown. God was with this. That's how we made that stop. I, again, respectfully kind of roll my eyes a little bit at it. Like, you know, it's not something I would do. I say all that to say this. I genuinely believe that statement. I believe that from, um, you know, I, I, I have known Scott a long time. I, I like him immensely. He's one of my favorite people in the industry. I, I don't know that he and I would agree on many topics outside of basketball. Like we started saying, hey, what do you think about this? I don't know that we would agree on some things, but I do know him to be a fundamentally like good man. And um, I admire, not only do I like him, I admire him a lot. And I, I do believe that, that family and faith I do believe those are the two most important things to him. So when I made that statement, I didn't roll my eyes like, oh, he must have got a big contract extension at Baylor. When I read that statement, you know what I thought? I thought that's really who he is. And that really is what it came down to. And I, I can ad- appreciate somebody flirting with the idea of maybe going to what some people would call the biggest job in the sport. Like, how could you not? be interested on some level if they wanted to talk to you, right? I get that. But I can really admire somebody at the end of the day saying, this isn't what's best for me and my family. I don't feel like this is where we need to be. I don't know that I need to mess with happiness because often coaches do. And I think the greatest example of this, and I'm not second guessing anybody's career choices because um, I wouldn't want anybody doing that to mine. But, you know, Chris Mack was at Xavier, the head coach of his alma mater, rocking and rolling at the tip top of the Big East. And he decided the Louisville job was just too good to turn down. Mm-hmm. And he took it and he got, he made a lot of money, but it obviously didn't go that well. And he's now the head coach at Charleston. Um, and so I just think you, you can find examples like that where, hey, man, you know, you could have left well enough alone and probably been in a better spot. And it feels like on some level that is what Dan Hurley's doing, although I think it's more sensible for Dan to – you know, UConn is, you know, Baylor's not UConn and Baylor's not coming off back-to-back national championships. So the whole Dan Hurley thing never made much sense to me. I, I, I couldn't comprehend him leaving under these circumstances for any job. Um, but the Scott Drew one, I could sort of see it. And the idea that at the very end, he just couldn't pull the trigger on it. Um, I know it's frustrating and, and perhaps disappointing for Kentucky fans, but just uh, uh, man-to-man, husband-to-husband, father-to-father, I can really uh, – appreciate what he did here and um uh, you know it it makes a it makes a ton of sense to me strong dog did i lose you i'm here uh, strong dog did i lose you no i'm here so i was just saying um the point i made is that i i i I understand why he'd be interested i also understand why he decided to turn back and return to baylor and um right. I, I, I don't find his public reasoning to be – I'm not skeptical of it. The, 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 right. the words of the statement are the words that I know, that I believe um, – I, I believe that to be true with Scott Drew. I guess that's the point I'm making. Yeah, no, and I totally agree with you there. Um, he's, you know, he's kind of built this program and this culture and this, this brand kind of on the culture of joy, right? And, uh, you know, I think you could probably make a case that it, it feels a little cliche, but if you know Scott Drew, as you seem to, to know Scott Drew, um, every decision that he makes kind of stems from that. He, he's, he's a guy who prioritizes his happiness. He's a family guy. He's obviously someone who's, who's built something special at Baylor. And I, I think you put it very well as you, 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 do you want to leave kind of well enough where it is? Do you want to take another job that, you know, maybe it's more money. Uh, maybe it's a, uh, it's a better job, but he's got a pretty good job at Baylor. He's making pretty good money at Baylor. He, his family likes the situation at Baylor. And so, yeah, I, I think it's right to maybe explore what Kentucky had to offer. It is, you know, after all, one of the best, if not the best jobs in college basketball, but ultimately him turning it down, Maybe a tad surprising, but just because Scott Drew is Scott Drew, um, ultimately, I don't think it's that surprising. Yeah, and the other thing, just another aspect of this, I mentioned I had had Mexican in Waco with Scott Drew before. (laughs) To my recollection of that, 
it was after a game. Like he was Scott Drew in Baylor gear after a game. We were in a Mexican restaurant in Waco. I don't remember anybody bothering us. And by bothering us, I mean even looking at us. You know, I don't remember anybody saying anything to us, asking for a picture, for an autograph. Just to contrast that with it became news in Lexington yesterday that he was at a Mexican restaurant in Waco and that restaurant got bombarded with phone calls. That's the difference in life. You 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 can have a peaceful meal in Waco forever or you can never ha- experience that again ever. And some people like actually run toward the light, right? Um mm-hmm. I think John Calipari at least for a while enjoyed that aspect of the job. Absolutely. The other the, the problem of course is even if you enjoy that aspect of the job, you really only enjoy it when it's good because when it flips on you, it gets bad for everybody. But I do think some people enjoy that aspect of being the most famous person in a state and by extension, one of the most famous people in college basketball. I, I think some people run toward that. I don't think Scott does. I don't think he needs it. And I, I don't want to speak for Scott, but you know, when you add all that stuff up, I, again, can completely understand why he's uh, deciding to remain at Baylor. So the big question now is, uh, what does Kentucky do next? Dan Hurley is is out. Uh, Scott Drew is out. Uh, Naismith Memorial Hall of Famer, two-time national champion, our colleague at CBS Sports, Jay Wright, has indicated he has no interest. I got some thoughts. I know Kyle Boone's got some thoughts. We'll share them next. But first, let's get one word from our partners. We need the sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ, anywhere, anytime, all the time. Kyle Boone, I'll give you first dibs. You're Mitch Barnhart right now. Dan Hurley has already politely said no. Scott Drew has already politely said no. Jay Wright has uh, politely indicated he's just not interested in coaching college basketball. Yep. You're Mitch Barnhart. What do you do now? I'm calling Rick Pitino. Um, I think you've got some options here that are still out on the table. Uh, Billy Donovan, I think, could be a reasonable option. Sean Miller could be a reasonable option. Bruce Pearl could be possibly an option. Uh, but Rick Pitino, bring the man home. Uh, he is a Hall of Fame coach. He's widely regarded as one of the best tacticians. In college basketball, uh, he would bring some flavor, some swag back to Kentucky. And we talked a little bit earlier about, you know, some people run towards the light. Rick Pitino is sprinting towards that light. He loves that limelight. He is someone who's going to he's, he's gonna be getting, getting off that private plane with the white suit, rocking and rolling. Uh, just in terms of, you know, charisma and, and character and fit, uh, Rick Pitino and Kentucky are made for each other. That is who I would be calling next. Um, I'm not sure if you would have a different opinion there, but you know, there's a couple of guys still on the board who obviously they've, they've whiffed on a couple candidates here, but I think there's some reasonably good options still available. I think it would be awesome if Rick Pitino were the next head coach at Kentucky. I do not think it's crazy and he would definitely be on my list, but I checked the betting markets earlier, saw this. Do you know who right now in this moment? is the favorite to be the next head coach of the University of Kentucky in the betting markets? I would say, let's go, sh- I'd say Sean Miller. Billy Donovan. And oh. that is, And that's what I would do. I know that Billy has publicly addressed the Kentucky job, and I've seen that get aggregated into Billy Donovan expresses no interest in the Kentucky job, or Billy uh, Donovan um, pledges allegiance to the Chicago Bulls or the NBA. If you go back and watch it, or just read the transcript, it's not actually what he did. He did the same thing every coach in the history of coaching searches has done when they are maybe kind of interested in a job, but they can't quite say it, right? He said stuff like, uh, my focus is on the the Bulls. My focus is on this team. Well, okay, sure. That's not what we're asking you, though. The, the answer is, if the, if the, the question is, if the Kentucky Wildcats wanted you to be their next head coach, what would you do? He hasn't answered that one yet. Not yet. Um, you know, like, again, you can find it on YouTube, a video of John Calipari standing on a tarmac as the head coach of the University of Memphis. And he's being asked by a bunch of local cameras about the Kentucky opening. This would have been back in, 
you know, March 2009, I guess. And you know what he said? He looked at the cameras and he said, this is where I want to be. And all Memphis fans were like, there, he said it. He said this is where he wants to be. And then like less than a week later, you know what he said? Yeah, I changed my mind. Decided I wanted to be somewhere else. When I was telling you that, I was telling you the truth. It was where I wanted to be. But then I was presented with an opportunity and I decided I wanted to be with somewhere else. This is the way coaches talk about this stuff. So what did Billy Donovan say the other day? My focus is on the Chicago Bulls. Okay. But eventually the Chicago Bulls season is going to end probably next week. And then where will his focus be? Simply put, Billy Donovan's been a head coach in the NBA for nine seasons. Five at Oklahoma City. This is year four in Chicago. It's not going well. He really might be a year from getting fired in Chicago anyway. All right? So I don't not here to tell you what Billy Donovan will do. But I'm here to tell you I can't make sense of a world where Billy Donovan wouldn't at least be interested in your job if you were to put everything on the table that he needs to be successful. And that means millions of dollars for him and millions of dollars in NIL. I understand why he turned you down when you hired Billy Gillespie and then turned you down again when you hired John Calipari. But Billy's circumstances have changed dramatically since then. College basketball has changed dramatically since then. And I do not think Kentucky fans will regret for a minute, quote, waiting on Billy Donovan if ultimately you do land Billy Donovan. Your thoughts on that? I think that's perfectly put. Uh, in the same situation um, that pushed John Calipari out of Kentucky could be the same situation that ultimately lands Kentucky its next coach, which is, okay, it, you know, a week ago, it looked as if Kentucky was going to um, push it back. They were going to run it back with John Calipari. They had, you know, Mitch, Mitch Barnhart and Calipari go on TV and they talk about, you know, making nice and, and moving forward. Uh, but it was it was clearly in a situation where he was not comfortable. He was not happy, um, and the seat was warming up. You know, he maybe he had it one more year. He loses uh, in the first round of the NCAA tournament next year. There's no chance that he's coming back as Kentucky's coach. So he takes a job at Arkansas um, that is going to prioritize him. They offered him bukus of money. Uh, they've decided, you know, that they want to roll with John Calipari. This is a perfect parachute for Calipari to jump on. And I think that same type of scenario could be playing out for Billy Donovan, where, you know, maybe Billy Donovan gets one more year in the NBA. He's coaching the Bulls. That The team is, uh, you know, going to be in the play-in. Um, they're okay, but they're definitely just okay at the moment. Uh, the situation there in Chicago, you know, I, I think – there's a good chance that he's maybe not there for the long term. So you go and look at a place like Kentucky that can spend as much as anyone in college basketball, that uh, one of the best programs in college basketball, and essentially say, hey, look, I, I know I'm, I may have uh, a future still coaching in the NBA, and then maybe I can even come back to that at some point. But right now, just kind of reading the writing on the walls, uh, I think Kentucky offers maybe a little bit more comfort and uh, a parachute from Chicago to Lexington would make a lot of sense for a lot of different reasons. What every NBA coach who is a former college coach enjoys about the NBA and hated about college basketball, at least a previous incarnation of it, was like the recruiting aspect of it. The idea that you had to be at grassroots game all summer and watching 15 year olds and like you really have to start recruiting a 14 year old when he's 14 and then stay in touch with him for four years to maybe make his list of final five. It's like, what are we like? What is this the way I'm spending my life? Like I should be talking to my own kids, not other people's kids nonstop. Do you realize college coaches probably spend more time on the phone in some cases talking to teenagers more than they talk on the phone to their own teenagers that they're raising. Do you understand that? Like, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> but that's true. It's crazy, but it's true. Well, that's not really college basketball anymore. Like, if I'm Mitch Barnhart, I'm sitting down with Billy Donovan, and I'm saying, I understood. I understand all the reasons you wanted to go to the NBA and all the reasons you've stayed there for as long as you stayed there. But you don't have to do the things you used to have to do to be successful in college basketball anymore. Think right. of college basketball recruiting now as NBA free agency. 
You know how NBA free agency works for the most part? Who's got cap space? Who's got the money? Mm-hmm. Hey, this 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 franchise is offering you three years, twenty seven million, and this franchise is offering you four years, fifty five. Where you want to go? Well, I, I guess I go where I, I, that's easy. Yeah. College basketball recruiting is not entirely that now, but it is more that now than it's ever been. So if you're at Kentucky, you 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 make it worth Billy's while, and then you give him the resources to go out and quite literally buy the best basketball team he can buy every single year. You no longer are required to be on Zooms all day or text messaging all day or pretending that you like the new little baby album that you probably <laughs> never listened to. Right. You just have to say, young man, I'm Billy Donovan. I coach Kevin Durant. You know, I coach Russell Westbrook. You know, I've been in the NBA. I've won two national championships. I've worked in the SEC successfully before. Now I'm the head coach at Kentucky. So do you want to come play at the biggest and baddest place in America for the most money you could possibly make? Oh, that's it. That's the whole recruiting pitch. That's as long as it takes. That's as long (laughs) as it takes. So I'm just saying that. You can think that Billy Donovan has always said he didn't want to come back to college basketball, but that was a different Billy Donovan, and it was a different college basketball. The Billy Donovan we're talking about right now is maybe less than a year away from getting fired from the NBA, um, and and college basketball right now is not the college basketball that Billy Donovan left. And by the way, we say wait on Billy Donovan. Like, you might have to wait to hire him, but you don't have to wait on him. Like, Billy Donovan, like, you know, I'm sure Mitch Barnhart has his phone number. And if he wants to talk to him, he could do that yesterday. So when I say wait on Billy Donovan, I mean you might have to wait a week to actually hire him. But you don't have to wait a week to figure this out. You could be on the phone with him right now, like literally right now, and just saying, here's what we – we're not asking you to walk away from your team, all right? Obviously, we're not. But here's what we got. Are you interested? If so, let's talk about it. And and so here's, here's what I'm telling you just from a reporting perspective. If you don't see a report in the next 24 to 36 hours that says Kentucky is zeroing in or whatever the, you know, whatever the phrases people use, zeroing in on Bruce Pearl, zeroing in on Rick Patino, zeroing in on Mark Pope, zeroing in on TJ Otzelberger, zeroing in on Brad Underwood, zeroing in on Tommy. If you don't see one of those, you know what they're doing? They've already, they've already figured it out. They're gonna they're gonna wait for Billy Donovan season to end, and that's gonna be their guy. If if you hear them moving on, then then they probably have gotten word through back channels. Billy's not gonna do this, but if you see this thing slow down publicly over the next twenty four to thirty six hours, then that would suggest they're doing what it is. I think they should do. And listen, I'm not sitting here guaranteeing you Billy Donovan would say yes. I'm just guaranteeing you Billy Donovan would have to think about it seriously. Because it would be, frankly, nonsensical not to think about it, at right. least a little seriously. Agreed. Agreed. I think that's well put. Um, I still like Rick Pitino in, in uh, Kentucky for many, many reasons. Well, well, that's the, Billy, yeah. well, well, that's the other thing. You can go all in on Billy Donovan. And Absolutely. If he, and if he turns you down, boom, you just go get Rick Pitino or go get Mark Pope. Like, Mark Pope is not turning you down. I'm, I'm like, uh, you know, he's just not. All right. And Patino's probably not either. Yeah. And I can't imagine Patino does either. So yep. that that's the way I would do this. I would make, just like I said, I would make Scott Drew tell me no. And I I even went so far, and I know this isn't universally accepted as true, but I would make Nate Oates tell me no. Um, I'm at a point now, if I'm UK, uh, Billy Donovan would have to tell me no. Billy Donovan Agreed. would have to say, no, I am going to remain the head coach of the Chicago of the mediocre Chicago Bulls. Because by the way, like year one in Chicago missed the playoffs. Year two finished fifth in the East, lost in the first round. Year three missed the playoffs. This is year four. He's currently ninth in the East, probably hosting a play-in game against Atlanta next week. Season probably ends next week. Like guys like that get fired in the NBA all the time. So at, at the very least, he's like one more of these years, one more of those types of years away from getting fired. So that's what you're really asking Billy Donovan. You're not asking him to pick between coaching Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook in Oklahoma City with a new five-year fresh contract or whatever, or Kentucky. You're saying, do you want to go, and I know they don't think of the NBA as hot seat, but like, do you want to be on the hot seat heading into next season in, for a mediocre Bulls team? Or do you want to coach the biggest brand in college basketball? Those are yeah. his options now. 
Those weren't those have never been his options before. That's why when you hear people say he's already I saw it in the chat earlier. He's already turned us down twice. Yeah. Once he turned you down to 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 stay at Florida. Right. That was a different deal. You know, all these other jobs he's turned down over the years is like he's been in a better position than he is right now. Mm -hmm. He's never been like the head coach of a mediocre Eastern conference franchise, probably a year away from getting fired. If he doesn't turn it into something better than a mediocre franchise, that's his reality right now. So if he turns down Kentucky this time, that's what he would be turning it down for. I'm not so sure that he would. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And what's, what's a week to wait. Um, if you're Kentucky, if Mitch Barnhart has decided, Hey, I like Billy Donovan most. He's top of top of the list. These other guys are not going anywhere. So to your point, yeah, if you like Billy Donovan, shoot him a text, do some back channeling, figure it out. You, if you have to wait a week, you wait a week. Um, so we'll see where this goes. It's going to be interesting. Uh, okay. Did not expect Scott Drew and Dan Hurley to be turning it down in the next, you know, in the last week. But yeah, this is uh, this is a very good job, obviously. Yeah. And um, like, listen, I'm not saying that at this point, the only the only guy who could win at Kentucky would be Billy Donovan, because I think any competent coach can win at Kentucky. Like, you have to really be incompetent to not win at Kentucky. I mean, it's set up to win. You know, it's, it's, it's like coaching LeBron James. Like, you coach LeBron James, you just, you know, you should win. If you're coaching at Kentucky, you should win. If you don't, it's, it's a you problem, not a Kentucky problem. So... I'm not saying he's the only – like Sean Miller could win at Kentucky. Tom, uh, Tommy Lloyd could win at Kentucky. Mark Pope, I think, would win at Kentucky. TJ Osterberger would win at Kentucky. Obviously, Bruce Pearl will win at Kentucky. I'm just saying of the options available to you right now, in theory, Billy Donovan looks like the most obvious one. And if, if Mitch Barnhart goes on to hire somebody else, if I were a Kentucky fan, I would just like to know. I'd like for him to be able to say – Yes, we explored even privately. If he was like, if I'm a Kentucky booster and he's talking to me privately, I'd like for Mitch to be able to say, if we don't end up with Billy Donovan, I would like for him to say, oh, we explored that. Trust me. Of course, we talked to Billy. We told yeah. him he could be the highest paid this in college basketball and he'd have the best NIL in college basketball. And buddy, you just have no idea how much he hates college basketball because he ain't coming back. But of course, <laughs> we tried that. He should at least be able to say that to people in his inner circle. If he hires somebody else, else without being able to say that, I feel like it's a mistake. If he yeah. hires somebody else and when somebody privately asks him, well, what about Billy Donovan? If he says, yeah, he might have been interested, but we just didn't feel like we could wait. I think that's a mistake. Now, yeah. if we end up where they somehow win two play in games and he's in the actual playoffs, well, then, you know, then we got to have another conversation. But barring a surprise, the Chicago Bulls season should end next week. And if all you got to do is wait till next week to maybe have Billy Donovan as your next coach, then um, I promise you will not regret waiting. It, it feels like a long time, but it won't. You'll have a press conference inside Rupp Arena, and uh, it would be amazing. As always, we'll see where this goes. When we get more news, we'll be back here on the Ion College Basketball Podcast. For now, though, shouts to Devin Downey. Shouts to Chester, South Carolina. Shouts to Terry M.F. and Teagle. He's a legend. Shouts to Huck. How about Huck? Shout out, Huck. Shout How out about Huck? Huck? Big day for Huck. Big I mean, day for Huck. I mean, if we're being honest, it's a big day for Huck. Shouts to Larnell. Thank you guys once again for watching the Ion College Basketball Podcast. If you're not subscribed, please go subscribe anywhere you subscribe to podcasts, Apple, Spotify. There are more of us than there are of them. That's got to be mm -hmm. reflected in the comments. Make sure to yeah. do that. We'll talk to you again real soon. Till then.